All right, cheers, parents. We made it through another day, so we're still here and excited to come at you guys live from the kitchen tonight. Totally new. They've never done this one before, but we're really, really excited uh, to talk about nutrition today because anyone who's ever tried to get in shape before knows if you if you don't get your nutrition in order before figuring out your your workout or while you're doing it, uh, you're fighting an uphill battle. It's uh, it, it takes it, it takes a lot longer to get the results you want if if uh, you know if it's able possible at all if your nutrition is totally lacking and moved in the opposite direction. So uh, we're really really excited. We have Alexander, who's a, a registered uh, nutritionist dietitian. Uh, coming on to the show this evening to share some insights with us as parents. Uh, and she works at, at Thrive and Bloom Nutrition uh, and, and is awesome. So before she comes on, while we're just waiting uh, just for, for a sec for you guys to find the, the, the link here, uh, let's just take, let's take a few deep breaths. Make, maybe make, grab your, your drink. If you uh, didn't see the post before, we are going to be making a special, uh, a special fun snack this evening. Uh, so if you didn't see that ingredient list, you want to uh, tag along, or maybe you're watching this on the replay, um, just you know, look at, like I got the Instagram post. I'll put it posted again in the description in the comments so you guys have the ingredient list if you want to try this later. Um, but, uh, but check that out, uh, and, uh, and you're here. So let's take, a, let's take a few deep breaths just to help everybody unwind for a second because it's been a long day. So we're going to just do four deep breaths. So in through the nose, uh, out through the mouth. Three more. <sighs> Let all that negative energy out. <sighs> all right. And if you guys have any questions while you're here, post it in the comments section. We'll be checking in, into that. So as we're talking, uh, we'll be able to fig- fill in and figure that out. So wave hi. Give us a say hello. Let us know who, who's here. Um, and if you again, if you have questions, uh, you know, post them. Even if you're watching on the replay, uh, we might be able to get back to you later if you've got some nutrition questions. So without further ado, I'm going to bring on Alexandra uh, to to say hi. Hello. All right. Let me unmute you here. I got, that, that was, that was, Thank you for having me. Yeah. Yeah. It's super awesome to have you on. Uh, and we got to get your extra, the extra special guest. Uh, yeah. guest star. <laughs> Little Fletcher, yep, he's our assistant today. <laughs> we we all need that. It, it just makes it extra challenging. This is the you know when it comes to being a powerful parent, being able to work in the kitchen with a child strapped to you is not an not an easy feat. So mm-hmm. any any parent who who does is able to do that, uh, it is not it's not easy. It's physically extremely challenging. So I applaud you on being able to do that. Uh, you know with a, a two month old child on you. It's uh, not, <laughs> it's impressive, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that. Thank you, yes, so I might be swaying a little bit. Throughout <laughs> I'll, I'll, do, I'll do it with you, we'll just we'll get everybody going. And so so I'll, have, I'll have you introduce yourself to everybody because uh, some of the folks here may not know you if you're you know, folks who are in North Jersey uh, or in the Maplewood, South Orange area might or have already heard of Thriving, Thriving Bloom Nutrition, but I'll let you introduce what, uh, what you're doing and your background a little bit before we get going. Yeah, thank you. So as Jason mentioned, I'm a registered dietitian and I'm based in Maplewood. Um, My practice is Thrive and Bloom Nutrition and I specialize in really helping parents, particularly moms, um, through the pregnancy, postpartum and beyond phases, um, really through that transition into parenthood because it can be really tough. Um, And so nutrition is such a big piece of the puzzle into how we feel and long-term health. And so I um, love working with new parents and, and helping them figure out how to make nutrition work for you during these tough times, um, especially making it more low maintenance because especially now, parenthood and just everything going on right now, um, stress is at an all time high. And so whatever I can do to help food get off of that list of your stress, um, that is what I focus on because food, I really want that to be, you know, a positive experience in your life, not something that's adding to the stress on your plate. That's awesome. I, we, we all, we all feel that right now. So I, I, I appreciate that. And I know, 
uh, our friends uh, and the folks who I've talked to, everybody agrees on that. There's, I don't think I've met a single person and especially a parent right now who isn't stressed out and can use something to reduce that stress. Hence, uh, you know, a, a, a nice cocktail at the end of the evening. Maybe, maybe that's not the best thing to do every night, but uh, on occasion, it, it can definitely be helpful. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, but uh, but yeah, so I, I I know there's probably a few you know a few major questions. You had some major tips and things that you've seen work really really well for for a lot of the parents that you work with. So I'll let you start with that, and then if if questions come up on the sides, we can talk about that, or we can kind of go go along with it, and then get into any anything else. Great. Yeah. So usually um, with a lot of my clients and you know the conversation typically starts with what what should I be eating? How can what I eat make me feel better or help me accomplish you know XYZ goal? And so we do focus a lot on that. But today I wanted to especially bring in the other side of the equation, which is the relationship with food. Um, because that is is equally as important sometimes even more important than what you're eating but how you're eating um the the mental piece of it as well and how that can circle back and affect um how much you're eating what you're eating and so i wanted to share um some tips uh, i have five top tips on to how to improve your relationship with food um and it's important for everyone but really especially for parents because as with so many other areas of lifestyle, whether it's physical activity or um, whether it's you know eating more vegetables or, or anything, um, role modeling is such a big piece of that. And yeah. so with um, your relationship with food, it um, is, is something that we wanna start role modeling from an early age so that our children can pick up on that healthy relationship as well and incorporate it. That's great. Um, so, who has an extra support off camera? Um, so tip number one is actually self-reflection. So I want us to be able to think about any food rules we might have in our lives. Um, and oftentimes they might not be super conscious. They might be things that we kind of just follow and not realize that we have food rules. Um, so whether it's like, I can't eat carbs at night, or I can only have chocolate after I work out, um, these types of rules um, that might be influencing what you're eat, eating um, is something that is we really want to kind of take the time to intentionally consider um, and see how that might be affecting our lives. And then translating to our kids' lives as well, because most often you have these rules for yourself, but it's not something that you'd like your child to be carrying on in their lives. So kind of want to start at the root um, to address it there. And so you have to be able to name it in order to change it. And so that's why that self-reflection piece is really important, just kind of observing what rules you might have for yourself. Yeah. Um, in I'm, sure, to I'm sure a lot of the rules have gone out the window. I know early we, we were going, we were trying to go very plant-based right before pandemic. Mm -hmm. It was like a new, you know, new thing. We were trying to get, you know, get a little bit more of the protein, the meat out, or the meat out uh, mm -hmm. and uh, not protein. Protein's good. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, and, you know, then, then quarantine hit and we were like, well, weather's nice a hot dog really would you know be okay right now and you know it's there, there is, there's a understanding of the rules can be really important uh, and then almost everyone breaks them right yeah and so that's really the key is to be able to adapt not having these rules be so restrictive that it's affecting your ability to enjoy life and to be flexible when things <laughs> Flexibility. <laughs> this is, this is real, guys, this is real life. This is how this is how all this works. So, as a mom or as a dad, like we, our kids are with us, and they're uh, you know, I that's, gotta get with it. Keep the keep the bounce going. I told you, I'm gonna I'm gonna bounce. Uh, bounce <laughs> Dance yeah. along. We're all, we're all about movement in the Powerful Parent Club. So. Uh, any movement you guys can get while you're watching is, uh, is a good thing. Don't you have to sit down while you're doing this, move around, do some squats, do some lunges, help yourself yeah. out. 
<laughs> Love it. Um, so tip number two um, is not to label foods as good or bad. Um, and that's really because language is really powerful. And the risk is that we don't want to start sliding into I'm being good for eating this food. I'm being bad for eating that food. And so really to kind of keep, you know, nutrition and food, there's a lot of nuance. Um, so a food that is good for someone might not be the best food choice for someone else. And yeah. so trying to move away from those labels and giving, again, yourself the flexibility to explore different foods and see what is going to be best for you is really where we want to focus. Um, and then... Oh, realistic, right? It's, uh... <laughs> uh, number three is very similar. So we don't want to have any off-limit foods either yeah. um, because that can really perpetuate you know, almost an obsession with whatever food you're telling yourself <laughs> to eat. Um, and so well, it, we could we could also if you, if you need a, if you need a time out a break to like eat and uh, or do anything, we could we could postpone and come back in 15 minutes if, if that if maybe break. just a 10 minute feeding break. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're gonna do intermission right now. We're gonna we're gonna end. Tune back in in 15 minutes uh, <laughs> because because this is this is real life. While you've got your here, you've got a drink in your hands. Hold on, I'll pull you off the screen, um, guys. Uh, you can take this time right now. This is the perfect chance to to work. You know, we'll, we'll get some movement in with uh, with me right now. Uh, so you're here. Thanks for being here. It's it's been a long day. We're getting we're getting towards the weekend. So why why not? We're we're here. Your your kids are maybe they're gone. Maybe they're awake. Let's hit, let's get a few squats in. Who's who's with me? Who's with me? So we're coming down. We're coming back up. All right, here we go. Ten ten times. Ten times. One. We're in the kitchen. It's a perfect time to be doing a workout. Maybe you got your oats to add a little extra weight. <laughs> Maybe you want to get some some high knees coming in here. Maybe we're reaching for the sky while you're waiting for your your all your ingredients to come together. These are the important things. Maybe if uh, if your back has been bugging you, maybe you want to lean over the counter uh, and use your arms to do. Let's do some tricep dips. What do you think? We got we got plenty of things that we can be doing while. <laughs> while, while, while we're in the kitchen, while we're waiting for something to cook, while you're waiting for water to boil, while you're waiting for the coffee to be made, there is no good excuse for saying that you can't fit exercise into your life. It's all about figuring out where do you place that, uh, that <laughs> where do you place that movement throughout the day? Uh, and when it's dealing, when we're dealing with kids, right there, there's a lot that needs to, to happen. There's a lot of uh, uh, that, that, you're, you're you need to carry there's a lot of weight there's there's all these different things that uh that go into caring for a child and it really is an olympic sport it's uh it's no joke when you're carrying around a heavy weight all day in different positions it's a challenge that's why that's why we're doing this we're doing the powerful parent club to get folks moving to get people uh you know thinking about how they can be a better parent how they can stay more active and that's really the the fun of all this is what what can we do how can we do this better? And using my background and, and, and introduce myself, if there's anybody new who's tuning in right now, I'm a doctor of physical therapy uh, and I'm, you know, I've got a, a four-year-old and a seven-month-old and I'm very passionate about helping. <laughs> thank you. Thank <laughs> Who is that? I can't see. Um, but it's, it, it's, you know, I'm passionate about helping parents think about what we can be doing better because most of the time we just kind of keep pushing through, pushing through, pushing through, uh, and we don't think about it. And honestly, I think it's going to be a big problem uh, that we're going to run into as a health, uh, as, as a national and even global, hey, Rebecca, <laughs> uh, global issue. So it is, it, we got to think about it. And if we don't think about it, then we're going to, we, we don't want to be the running into problems, you know, a few years from now, uh, because we've been compensating in different ways. And so that's the the whole idea. Rebecca, do you have any fun questions for our nutritionist when she comes back? You can, you can add that in. Um, but, but folks, uh, 
That's if uh, if you've got questions, if you've got thoughts, let us know. Uh, if you didn't see the the ingredients we are using, um, so because we're making uh, cookie dough hummus, which is I, I've I've never done this before. We need some garbanzo can of garbanzo beans. Okay. Uh, we want a quarter cup of cashews uh, or substitute another nut maybe. Uh, we got a quarter cup of chocolate chips. I believe, let me check here. I'm gonna check the recipe. All right, hold on one second. Okay, we got three tablespoons of oats. So if you've got your oats, there we go. We got three tablespoons of that. We're gonna use maple syrup. Uh, this is the closest I think I'll ever get to doing a cooking show, guys. Uh, and we've got two teaspoons of vanilla. So I've got my vanilla extract ready to go. And we got a little, little salt. So some salt and, uh, and folks, uh, I'll, I'll give another wall or I'll give another plug. Um, we've got a, a really good friend who runs an awesome spice company called Burlap and Barrel. So you got, you can check out our, our little collection over here. Um, they make some of the most phenomenal spices you've ever, you've ever tasted. Uh, so I highly recommend checking them out. Um, they're not paying me to do that, but I do I, I love their, what they do and they're, they're all brands. It's, it's awesome. Uh, so if you haven't tried cooking with really good fresh spices, uh, you like, it, it makes a world of difference. I know my cooking has tasted a lot better since doing that. So, uh, so <laughs> I recommend it. Uh, let me see, Alexander. I'm gonna. Are, are you good to? You can give me a nod to pull you on screen. Yeah. All right. Cool. You're, <laughs> you're perfect. All right. Cool. All right. We got. Thanks. We got a new. We got a new question in here. How, how, how are you doing over there? You need. You need a little more time. I'm good. Um, yeah. Peace, content for the moment. <laughs> so awesome. thank you for allowing for that break. <laughs> this is this is what we always what we do. It's uh, we're constantly juggling and uh, and just moving. So it's all it's all about being being realistic, uh, and that's kind of the, the fun of all of this. Exactly. Um, so we got it looks like we got a question. So during pandemic, uh, with too little and working uh, full time, I have to stay up late to finally focus on work. I start getting the munchies and usually eat poorly just because I need to chew to focus. How bad is this habit? Also, I'm breastfeeding. <laughs> Um, so again, with um, when we're considering language, so it's not a bad habit. Um, I always like to think of things in a, a positive lens. Um, so what we want to do is um, try to bring a little bit of mindfulness into it. So trying to really explore what those cravings are saying. So is it true hunger? Do you need to have um, a balanced diet? I mean, especially if you're breastfeeding and your needs are higher, um, you very well might need extra snacks that you didn't before. Um, so maybe it is trying to figure out like incorporating a really solid balanced snack, making sure it has some protein and some fiber, maybe some healthy fats in there so that it's more satiating um, to your hunger. If it is just like I'm antsy, I'm bored, um, I just need to do something and, and snacking is something that, that I'm just doing to kind of pass the time or to, you know, bring a little pleasure into a stressful day, um, then it might be exploring what are potential other outlets um, for whatever you're using that food for. So if it is to kind of just like escape from the stress, like could it just be you know, watching 15 minutes of your favorite show or like chatting with your spouse or um, even just like, scrolling through your phone. Like it could be something simple as that doesn't have to be like meditation. That's another great option um, or yoga or exercise. You know, the, it can be anything um, that is kind of filling that need um, that you were previously, you know, diverting towards food. But if you are really hungry, then I'm all for, you know, incorporating the food. You don't want to uh, restrict yourself and say, I'm not supposed to be snacking right now. Um, it, it's really more exploring about what your body is really trying to tell you. Awesome. Cool. You guys, if, if, the, if you have follow up questions, feel free to post it in. I feel like we were, so we were on rule number three. We're moving on to rule number three. <laughs> yes. Um, so that was, you know, so 
kind of related. So I was talking about how there's no off limit foods um, because it kind of breeds that obsession, that restrictive mindset just causes you to want it more essentially. Um, so having foods that are off limit or limiting yourself to, I can only have this particular portion is really going to make you crave, whether it's conscious or subconscious, crave more of that food. Um, so the key is really allowing yourself the kind of the unconditional permission to have any food. Um, and then kind of refocusing into what are the foods that is, are going to make me feel best. So giving yourself that unconditional permission doesn't mean you're going to eat cake all day, every day, um, because you wouldn't be feeling good that way. Uh, and so it's kind of looking at both sides of that. What foods are going to help me have better workouts? What foods are going to give me more energy, like reduce GI symptoms, all of those kinds of things? What foods are going to make me feel good? Knowing that I can have any food that I want. And there are going to be times where, you know, that food's going to be ice cream. There are going to be times when that food's going to be broccoli. So it just, it's going to vary. Yeah, that's uh, that makes that makes sense. That's uh, that's good. Yeah. All um, right. So uh, number four is not using food um, as a reward and not making yourself have to earn foods. So it's very similar. We don't want it to be um, for kids. You know, you don't want to say you have to eat all your vegetables in order to get this dessert. Same thing for adults. You don't want to say I have to do. X amount of exercise, go for five mile run in order to have uh, carbs or something like that. Um, because for two reasons, number one, it's going to elevate that reward food, kind of put it on a pedestal and again, have that that craving, that obsession with that food. Um, mm -hmm. Number two, it kind of adds a negative association for whatever you were saying you had to do to get it. So if it's vegetables or if it's exercise, um, we those are, are good things for your body. So we don't want to be saying that that that's the the negative, that's the work that we have to do in order to get it. It's more we want we want to appreciate the intrinsic value of those things, not make ourselves have to go through it in order to get that the, the other reward. Yeah. That's really good. And uh, I, I feel like that, that rolls really well into mental health in general, like taking the positive view on anything in life where, uh, you know, there's so much, and like I, we see this all the time in physical therapy where someone comes in and they're in pain and they're, they're in this negative spiral and just starting to think in, on, on other things that you can do that maybe don't even affect the area that you're coming in to be seen for makes a huge difference. And so you start to move into these positive cycles and that improves everything and so just taking a positive view and a positive outlook we know i mean the research continues to prove this over and over again can make such a difference on how we feel and how our our, our, our whole body uh, is responds to you know everything uh so that's i, I like that a lot that's really good yeah definitely mindset is so powerful um yeah, and that brings us to the, the final tip here, which is just mindfulness. And so it's really about, when possible, limiting distractions while you're eating. <laughs> limiting, not eliminating, because we're realizing yeah. we're going to eliminate them. Um, but limiting, doing whatever you can to kind at least bring a little bit of focus to what you're eating. Centering yourself, if you're able to sit down, that's ideal, um, not scrolling through emails or watching screen while you're eating, um, doing what you can to be able to um, bring your attention to what you're eating, because that's really where you're going to be able to tap into your your true hunger and fullness cues to be able to figure out how much your body needs. Because um, that's one of the things we, we work on a lot is instead of sticking to an arbitrary portion, oh, I can have one cup of this or that, it's really figuring out what is your body asking for um, and how how do we, you know, respond to that um, because so for so so often we're we're kind of trying to stifle our body signals and force it into doing, you know, eating the way for an, um, an external rule, uh, whether it's a diet or, or just, you know, rules that you have for yourself. Um, but we want to bring it back internal and say, what does your body need at this moment? And 
I, so, you know, it might sound like that's really hard. Like, I don't know how much I need to eat. If I listen to my hunger and fullness, I would never stop eating, um, mm. or whatever it may be. And it is a process. So it's not something that you like flip the switch and all of a sudden you're able to do that really easily. It does take some practice, um, but it is possible. And that is where we we're trying to get to. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that takes work. And whenever you're dealing with mindfulness and understanding your body and how you respond to different stresses and anything, it's, it's a, a you, you have to find that consistency and that practice uh, and figuring out how to find that as a parent is probably one of the bigger challenges. So, uh, you know, working, you know, with, with someone like yourself, uh, I'm sure we'll, you can help folks come up with the strategies that they need to get more specific in some of these, uh, in these directions, which, uh, is it can make a huge, huge difference uh, when folks are having trouble um, kind of getting on that, that right path and making some some decisions that even even when we know there are certain things that we shouldn't be doing with food uh, and we do them anyway over and over again, uh, it's you know it's good to be thoughtful about that. Uh, awesome. Do you want to do you want to try to make the uh, the chickpea uh, the, the, <laughs> the yeah definitely we'll all right. See. Okay, so it's it's really simple. Essentially, we're just putting all the ingredients in the blender. All right, I like <laughs> that. Processor, blender, food processor, whichever you have. Um, so, try that. my little station here too. Stay here. All right, so. Okay, so we've got the, the chickpeas or the garbanzo beans. A lot of the recipes you can also use like um, as a base. If you're doing um, brownie brownie batter hummus, you can do black beans. There's a lot of variations to this. Yeah, yeah. I would say this, this, this is kind of the like treat version uh, that's... <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, so then you can add your cashews, your oats. All right. So it was a, a quarter cup of uh, cashews, a quarter, quarter cup of oats. Is that right? Three tablespoons of oats. Yeah. Three tablespoons of oats. Here we go. One, two, three. All right. Um, and we have maple syrup. Three tablespoons of that. Okay. All right. Let's find out. One, two. And three. Two teaspoons of vanilla. Two, two teaspoons? Two teaspoons, yep. Yeah. I'm gonna narrate and you can do it. I know, I'm not I'm not carrying a child right now, which is a wonderful thing. Uh all right. We're our teaspoon here. So two teaspoons of vanilla. If I can open it. Where Opening things beforehand is, can be helpful here. Okay. For the salt, it's like an eighth of a teaspoon. So, you know, you can kind of just okay. do a pinch or two. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then we save the chocolate chips till the end. So for those, that's all the ingredients you need and you can just keep pulsing it. Yep, All right. just it up until it's smooth. Let's see, let's see how this goes. A little bit as you go through, but. All right, I'm gonna, I'll mute, uh, I'll mute the camera. <laughs> let's see here. Actually, it's not too bad. Depending on how like creamy you want it, you could always add a splash of milk um, to if it's a little dry. It just needs a little dry, all right. We got some, some oat milk around here too. A little bit. I'm very curious, because we usually like go pretty simple when it comes to snacks. Yeah, and this, this is, of course, one that you would probably prepare ahead of time, but once you do, it makes a pretty decent portion that you can kind of just put it in the fridge. And in our house, it's gone within a day because <laughs> we really like it. Um, but it could last a couple of days to a week. 
All right, so we got, <laughs> say that one more time. All right. Yeah. And now basically, we, at the we, end, we'll then. More questions. Yeah. I'm going to throw in that oat milk. Uh, yeah. the, 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 the wonders of being prepared. Yeah. Just a drop of that. All right. Have to do the trick. Okay. So right. can, can pour it into whatever container or bowl you have and stir in the chocolate chips. Brilliant. Okay, folks. <laughs> Let's see what happens here. Everyone's favorite part. Well, it definitely looks like cookie dough, that's for sure. Yeah. And I think it tastes even better after it's had a little bit of time to chill, but it tastes okay. good straight away as well. <laughs> All right, I'll find it. Here's my finished version as well. Yeah, you're mixing a little maple syrup and some chocolate chips. Yeah, and then it, you got the protein from the chickpeas or the garbanzo beans and a lot of helpful um, vitamins and minerals in there as well. So it's, yeah. a, it's a great little snack. That's that's awesome. Thanks so much for, for running us through that and taking, taking I know your, your evening uh, parents time is so, so valuable these days. So uh, we really, really appreciate you coming on and sharing your advice and input um, with, with our group, uh, and giving us some, some new ideas for creative snacks, because, uh, that definitely is something I wouldn't have, wouldn't have thought of or tried, uh, beforehand. So it's nice to have some, some different things to play around with, uh, in the kitchen. Uh, and I know like our four-year-old loves playing around and, and coming up with some of these recipes too. So it's definitely fun to mix in some creative ideas that are healthier than the standard. So, uh, I could imagine like a lot of parents who are making real cookie dough, maybe you swap some of those other ingredients out and you're getting your, your chickpea protein in now, which is an awesome, uh, an awesome solution to add some of that healthy stuff in, into the mix, even when we're hiding it with some of the sweets. <laughs> so yeah, a good hybrid. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, folks, if anyone is looking to learn more about what Alexander is doing, uh, check in the description and some of the posts and, uh, and someone just asked, We'll post the recipe. I'll share. I'll, we'll, we'll post it again in the description. Uh, and thanks, folks, for tuning in. Uh, check out, you know, if you're looking for nutrition advice, definitely reach out to Alexandra and find out, uh, you know, what they're, or watch what they're doing on uh, Thrive and Bloom Nutrition because, uh, you know, it's, it's important stuff. You really got to take your nutrition seriously. So thanks again for sharing your time with us uh, and uh, spreading some joy and positivity with the, the parent community because. We all, we all we all need it. We all need to de-stress a little bit. So, um, yeah. thank you so much for having me. It was really yeah. fun. All right, all right, all right, folks. If you have other questions, feel free to post in the comments, or if you're watching on the replay, uh, you know we'll, we'll we'll check it out later. But have a great night. Enjoy. Cheers. All right. Good night. Thank you.